again, fans. Ray Morgan welcoming you to professional wrestling from the National Arena in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And some exciting matches. Here's how we get underway. A two out of three fall battle. An Australian tag team match. Bruno's cousin, Antonio Pugliese, from Campobasso, Italy, joins with Arnie Scolan to meet Angelo Savoldi and Tony Alamori. A one-fall match, Pete Sanchez takes on The Beast. And one-fall to curfew, Ronnie Atchison of St. Joe, Missouri, a newcomer, meets Masher Sloan. We'll be getting underway with this match in just a moment. Come the introductions from our ring announcer, Smiling Sam Mason. Ladies and gentlemen, promoter Vince McMahon has come up with another exciting star-studded wrestling card for the National Arena in Washington next week. And with your kind permission, I will take this opportunity to announce the entire card. The show will get underway with a match between Pete Sanchez of Brooklyn and the golden boy, Arnold Scolan. Angelo Savoldi takes on the Puerto Rican champion, Miguel Perez. Tomas Marin will oppose Ronnie Etchison, a Midwesterner who will make his debut here later tonight. Domingo Robles, also making his home in New York, will oppose Bobby Davis's The Beast. Tony Altamori, the pride of Connecticut, will take on everybody's favorite, Johnny Valentine. The 385-pound Prince Yukea, fresh from Honolulu and Japan, will take on two men, Jose Garcia and the magnificent Maurice. And that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. The dark match, starting at 8.30 p.m. And listen to this. A tag team match between Baron Mikel Cicluna and Dr. Bill Miller against Antonio Pugliese and his cousin, the world heavyweight champion, Bruno Sammartino. 8.30. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this tag team match is two out of three falls. Introducing in this corner from Stamford, Connecticut, at 231 pounds, Tony Altamore. His partner at 227 from Parsippany, New Jersey, Angelo Savoldi. They're facing the two men in this corner at 230 pounds from Campobasso, Italy, Antonio Pugliese. And his partner from White Plains, New York, at 232, the Golden Boy, Arnold Scolan. Well, with Savoldi, Altamori, and Pugliese in there, Scolan is the only uh, one out of, uh, like a fish out of water. He's the only non-Italian. Scolan, the uh, road manager of Bruno San Martino, in there now with his cousin, who has certainly shown that he can take care of himself, Pugliese. This should be quite a match. Alamori uh, already uh, inciting trouble. <laughs> well, it's going to be Arnie Scolan moving out against Tony Alamori. Alamori giving him a look at that footwork of his. I am the pride of Stamford, Connecticut. Alertly moving around, Scolan trying to bag him into the corner, and look at this. Savoldi uh, was all set. If uh, Alamori could get Scolan near that corner. Alamori fainting toward a trip out. Keep your eye on Savoldi. Watch out for Savoldi, Arnie. And Arnie winds up slapping Alamori on the face. Open hand. Alamori's feelings are hurt. And that smile that he had on his face is replaced with a grim look now. Nice shoulder haul and takedown by Savoldi, following with an arm lock. Arnie Scullin keeping him under control. Alamori coming to his feet now, and he doesn't stay there long. That was Savoldi charging in there. And to even the count, Pugliese moves in and some... Savoldi is stopped by the referee as Arnie Scolan picks up right where he left off, thanks to the help of Antonio Pugliese. Mori working across the face or windpipe, I can't see from here, which the referee can see, and Jack Davis wastes no time in counting him off. Even though he's uh, caught and has to be counted off the hold, it still has its effect on Arnie Scullin. Again, the count gets the two. Golan now trying to uh, get a tag off to his partner Pugliese, but thus far Alamori has succeeded in keeping him out of reach. 
Again, Jack Davis. Getting that count started. And once more in. Angelo Savoldi moving in when he isn't uh, allowed to. Well, once more, Pugliese trying to give Arnie a helping hand. And the referee is apparently convinced that there was a legitimate tag off made there. This is an Australian tag team match, two out of three falls. Two super wrestling shows are set for the New York area at Westchester County Center in White Plains, Monday night, February 14th, and at Whitey Carlson's beautiful Island Garden in West Hempstead, Friday night, February 18th. Bruno San Martino, wrestling's Iron Man and world's heavyweight champion, will make a title defense on each of these cards, headlining against Big Bill Miller at White Plains, Monday night, February 14th, and against Bobby Davis's undefeated Beast at West Hempstead, Friday night, February 18th. showing how strong he was to throw Pugliese off. Now he wants to have Savoli verify that he was being choked. <laughs> Look at this double arm stretch that Pugliese puts on. Alamore, he uh, has to watch those shoulders, too. He's in position to be pinned. Well, the vibrator going now as Pugliese shakes him up. Uh-oh, a roll-up by Alamori, but uh, he's not going anywhere. His leg's pinned, and look at this. Pugliese climbs aboard, and the crowd calling to ride him, cowboy. This is an unwilling buck and bronco. Alamori... Not at all happy about this position. Well, Yezzy puts the blinders on him. There, now Tony can see where he is. Indignant. Oh, hey, watch out. Don't you swing at him. This match will be over a lot faster than you think. Alamori claiming that his hair was pulled, that he was humiliated. Morning. And there go the uh, laces of his shoes. Now Savoli joins in. And here comes Scolan to try and even things up. Pugliese took all the steam out of that. Hey, look at this. Pugliese catching Savoli with a flying head scissors. That brought the fans to their feet. There goes Talbot. 
Tommy Alamore being crashed into the corner. Pugliese. Giving him the twist. Boy, that roughs up those ears. Savoli charging from the rear doesn't catch Pugliese unprepared, man. He can take care of himself, can he? Alamori nailed, Savoli nailed, and look, they're going to try and save one another. Up or down, it didn't matter. Pugliese let him have it. Oh, he's in trouble. He's between them. Right alongside that cauliflower ear. Boy, it's blooming now. Savoli trying to get a bear hug on there, but Arnie takes care of that for Pugliese. And the referee's forced to get him out of that corner. So only as you can see, using those trunks to get Pugliese over into his end of the ring. But that, well, Arnie's gonna be sent back. And that gives Aldemori and Savoli a chance to gang up on Bruno's cousin. <laughs> Alamore using that rope for something beside tag purposes. Pugliese tags off to Skolin. Skolin fires him away after nailing him with a forearm to the chin. Full Nelson by Arnie. Alamore's helping hand landed on the wrong spot. We may have a vendetta here in the between Alamore and Savoli. Reverse hammerlock, and boy, Savoldi knows how to take advantage of it. The New Jersey veteran banging away, whips him over in a backdrop, body press, two. Nope, Savoldi says, I'm not ready for him yet. I want to hurt him some more. He should have kept him there. Two, three, Alamori calling the top ropes as he tries to come over and help Savoldi. Skolin getting Savoli with a reverse full leg Nelson. And they got Savoli spinning like a top as Pugliese and Arnie nailing with those flying forearms. Savoli being held in his corner by Alamori. Let's get a let's get an official word. Alamori wants to try and get his version announced, but here's the official. Winner of the first fall, ladies and gentlemen, Pugliese and Skolan. There you have it, the winner of the first fall in this Australian tag team match. Two out of three falls between the team of Alamori and Savoldi and Pugliese and Skolan is Antonio Pugliese and Arnie Skolan. We'll be back with the next fall in a moment. Once more, Alamori is going to start the battle, and so is Arnie Skolan, representing their respective teams. I announced last week the possibility of the return of big-time wrestling to the Newark Armory. I can uh, add to that uh, the fact that promoter Willie Gilsenberg is in Washington tonight and has been in conference this past week with top city officials in Newark. And as just informed me, he'll have something definite to announce perhaps next week. I uh, don't have 
to add the fact that all of us will be certainly looking forward to getting wrestling back in the Newark Armory. And uh, we'll pass the word on to those of you fans who have been phoning and writing about that for such a long time. Alamore using some of his illegal tactics and Davis spots it but not before Alamore turns him over to the none too tender ministrations of Angelo Savoldi the boy Savoldi keeping him hung in there oh, oh, oh. well Alamore has certainly been trying and Savoldi's been on the receiving end twice now. Arnie Skolin got out of there just in time. The referee showing Savoldi supposed to be holding on to that rope, not holding on to any opponent while he's in that outside the ring. Alamore still feeling the effects of that charge of his that misfired. Alamore stepping back and Skolan warily watching. Alamore and Savoldi have to be very careful. Pugliese and Skolan won the first fall, and this could be the deciding fall. Wrestling's top talent will feature new faces while putting some of the good old Jersey bounce into the big show set for Moose Hall in Trenton this coming Monday night, January 31st. Baron Mikel Cicluna, the giant from Malta, Bobby Davis's beast, and Antonio Pugliese, Bruno's cousin, will be featured together with the champion himself, Bruno San Martino. That's the treat awaiting you New Jersey wrestling fans on one of the winner's top cards at Moose Hall in Trent this coming Monday night, January 31st. Stolen in trouble. And Davis just reminding Savoli if he doesn't hang on to that rope, he's going to disqualify both of them. Savoli only listens with one ear, apparently, and that must be the cauliflower one. As he grabs Skolin, hold it. here comes Pugliese to settle this issue. And look at this. Savoli looking for some place to hide as Pugliese is all out after him. Well, Pugliese's gonna make him stay in one corner, that's for sure. But in the other corner, Alamori is getting all the better of it. a foot to the ribs as Aldamori nails Skolan with a walloping right forearm to the jaw. That was a fist that time. That was no forearm. That was a plain out and out fist. And again Aldamori wings one in from right field. There's the tag off to Pugliese. And Aldamori didn't, oh, Aldamori did know he was coming in. He clamps the side headlock on. Down goes Pugliese from a jarring shoulder crash. Runs into a body grab. And Pugliese drapes him over in the corner. And his own, Pugliese's own corner. A driving forearm. Into the midsection. And Skolin and Pugliese have Alamori in trouble. Boy, they're tying him into all kinds of knots. There's that elbow smashing in again. Bruno must have gotten Johnny Valentine to show Pugliese how to do that. Now, the Mori fight. 
Giants. He took on more than he bargained for. Boy, did he get cold cocked. Wow. Savoli yelling for Alamore to get over for a tag, but Alamore only hears bells ringing, I'm afraid. Antonio Pugliese grabs him by the hair and sends him spinning. Whoa, a double knee drive right alongside those ears. A body slam by Pugliese. And again he catches Alamori. Pugliese with a crocodile clutch. Two, three. Boy, did Pugliese give him a going over. Wow. And then rolled him up in the crocodile clutch. Here comes the time. Oh, wait a minute. The winners, ladies and gentlemen, in two straight falls, Antonio Pugliese and Arnold Scolan. There. And Savoli trying to get him straightened away. There, Savoli and Alamori, they think that uh, they deserve the win, so Angelo holds up the arm of Alamori. Well, it was a game effort, but didn't help any. Alamori's still shaking his head. He doesn't know where he is for sure yet. One thing we do know, the winners in straight falls in this Australian tag team match between Pugliese and Scolan and the team of Savoldi and Aldemori is Antonio Pugliese and Arnold Scolan. We're going to give you a long look. Well, here he comes. Here he comes. You've heard of uh, the current fad long haircuts or, uh, or lack of haircuts. This fellow doesn't take this jacket off that it seems he's wearing. That's part of him. There he goes. That's Bobby Davis's beast. And man, he's like some Neanderthal fella. Look at that. That certainly isn't a mohair suit, but I haven't seen mohair. That's a terrible pun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this match is one fall. <laughs> Introducing in this corner from Brooklyn, New York, at 218 pounds, Pete Sanchez. His opponent, at 240, The Beast. Someone in back of me just yelled out, The Animal, and boy, they, they aren't far wrong. <laughs> Pete Sanchez, a very likable Brooklyn boy. He certainly is, uh, has his work cut out for him in this match. The Beast doesn't understand any uh, English, that's for sure. I saw him in one match last week, and I imagine many of you did. And all he knows is just keep going, just destroy the opposition. says, I don't, I don't want to get out yet, because the minute I take my hands off him, he's unleashed. Well, there's the bell, and there he goes. Sanchez bounced across the ring. And the beach a beast after him, like a wild, just typically like a wild animal, swarming all over him. The beast battering away. Sanchez hasn't had a chance to really get started. He's shaken up already. 
Promoter Whitey Carlson is ringing the bell again with one of his great wrestling shows in the beautiful Island Garden at West Hempstead, Friday night, February 18th. He's headlining the bout all Long Island fans have been looking forward to. Hitting Bobby Davis's new sensation, the fellow you're looking at right now, The Beast, in a title bout against the world's heavyweight champion, Bruno San Martino. You'd better get those seats early. There'll be no advance in admission prices for Whitey Carlson's wrestling spectacular at the Island Garden in West Hempstead, Long Island, Friday night, February 18th. can hear those forearms. He's not too uh, tall, but man, when he lands those forearms, you can hear the crash all over the arena. Bobby Davis meant it literally when he said, I sick them on people. And there's Davis watching the, watching his beast batter Sanchez into the corner. Now he feels the referee isn't is giving Sanchez too much time to recover. Sanchez trying to counter with a flying head scissors, but the beast refuses to go down, just rams him into the corner. The padding on one turnbuckle uh, has been uh, unhooked. And the beast apparently has spotted it. Uh, there's no protection when he picks, uh, say, there you are. Our cameras give you a shot of it. And when uh, the beast rams Sanchez into that, that's just plain metal that Sanchez is being met with. The beast, a human battering ram. Bobby Davis waves him on. grabbing Sanchez's leg. The beast doesn't need any help, but he's getting some from Davis anyway. I no sooner gets out of the hands of Davis than the beast is on him in all his fury again. He says that thousands of children of living veterans are now eligible for school benefits formerly available only to children of certain deceased veterans. Those additionally eligible are children of veterans permanently and totally disabled by illness or injury attributable to their service. Full details are available from the VA. A wild animal-like roar from the beast as he literally throws Sanchez across the ring. A beast going behind, clamping on a reverse headlock. It's close to the throat. Takes a handful of his face. Notice how the beast is always watching over in the corner at Davis. Ooh. And Sanchez went down like he was hit with a club. Into the corner. Well, that's uh, that one is uh, well padded, fortunately, for Pete. Oh, the beast has him in a rib-crushing bear hug. Throws him down. And a roar of triumph as he clamps on the Boston Crab. The Boston Crab. And Sanchez is forced to uh, call uncle, but that doesn't stop the beast. He's waiting for the word from Davis, and Davis taking his own good time about telling him 
to release it. Dell Davis is doing his best to indicate and finally succeeds in making the beast understand that he's to let him go. All right, Sam. Well, I gave Sam the signal, but apparently the beast doesn't even want Sanchez in there to hear this. The winner, ladies and gentlemen, on a submission hold, The Beast. There you get a good look at him, look. Well, he understands that, that it's all over. And now he's gonna help Davis down. Almost childlike in his uh, inability to understand, but boy. And there you have it, the winner of this match between Bobby Davis's Beast and Pete Sanchez is the Beast. Well, we're all set for the introduction, so Sam, go ahead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this match is one fall to curfew. Introducing in this corner from Butte, Montana, weighing 264 pounds, Smasher Sloan. His opponent from St. Joe, Missouri, at 240, Ronnie Etchison. This is a newcomer uh, that I haven't seen before, Ronnie Etchison. Very trim looking fellow and he has drawn a very rugged opening appearance opponent in the person of Smasher Sloan, the brawler from Butte. <laughs> taking his good time about folding that sweater. And then after, after carefully folding it, he throws it on the floor. <laughs> Let's see what this uh, Etchison looks like. Well, he certainly knows his way around uh, to that extent. And he lets Sloan go charging into the ropes again. Sloan going immediately for the ropes, says Etchison. Had a waist lock from the rear. Wrist lock by Etchison. Well, we'll have a chance to see Sloan show this power of his that he so want to brag about. Well, a break is called as he forces Etchison into the ropes. Hey, hey, this boy Etchison is all right. And Sloan, who is always the one to accuse his opponent of grabbing hair, although they'd have a hard time with that 
close cut haircut that Sloan has is always the one who is quickest to grab his opponent's hair. This is our final match. Big news for you Long Island fans, promoter Whitey Carlson has just signed, sealed, and delivered contracts for the biggest match in the country for West Hempstead on Friday, February 18th. About to a finish between Bobby Davis's undefeated beast and the champ Bruno San Martino. There will be no advance in prices, remember. Whitey informs us that this was a real tough match to make in addition to a big guarantee. He also had to get permission from the WWF for Bobby Davis to be, Davis to be in the beast corner. So I'd advise all you fans to start making your reservations for this outstanding match between the beast and Bruno San Martino at the Island Garden in West Hempstead Friday night, February 18th. Again, Smasher Sloan grabbing Etchison's hair and Etchison sliding out of the side headlock. Gets the advantage once more, but there, yeah, that'll teach him a lesson. A forearm to the small of the back by Ronnie. Trying to soften him up. Etchison has his feet under the ropes and uh, he... Even though the referee was going to break the hold, again he's forced to break. Sloan once more grabbing the windpipe. Well, this Edgerson certainly shows that he can mix it up if the opposition wants to. Atchison nailed him a beauty. Atchison with a press. This, and Sloan goes rolling out of the ring. He wants time to recover from that. I hope you heard the announcement. Uh, about next week's uh, card here at the National Arena. I hope uh, those of you who are close enough can come in. It should be a real Lulu. Bruno, for the first time since his cousin got in this country, will be joining him in the ring. Pugliese and Bruno taking on Big Bill Miller and Baron Mikel Sekluna in the opening match at 8.30. That's next week here at the National Arena. Edgerson whipped into the corner. Sloan tries to do it again, but Edgerson reverses it. And boy, Ed Ronnie right after him gives him a monkey flip. Did you see Sloan's mouth hanging open in complete surprise? It's shut now from those knee lifts. Sloan calling that it's a choke, but you can see the hands of uh, there. You can see right across the chin. No choke. Well, this Etchison knows how to uh, camouflage a hole if he wants to. Look at that knee vice now. That jars him. And Sloan is finding out that he has no novice in the ring with him. He may be a newcomer to this area, but he's certainly not a newcomer to the ring. Yeah. 
Incidentally, let me alert you uh, New York fans that the next wrestling card at Madison Square Garden is Monday night, February 21st. Smasher Sloan is uh, getting more and more reluctant about continuing this match. He uh, hasn't been able to scare Etchison even slightly with his roughhouse tactics. Oh man, that, that knee and foot didn't do any good. He's through the ropes. Sloan takes his own good time about releasing. Sloan coming mighty close to a disqualification. Etchison in real trouble now. Look at this. He's on those. He's hung up on that lower rope. Now he's going to have a chance to get his win back. Come on, take advantage of the count. Nope, he's right back in there. There's no two ways about this. Sloan is strong. You can see that. Look at this. Sloan just got bounced in. There's a flying drop kick by Etchison. Another. And Sloan scrambles for the safety of the outside. taking full advantage of the count 18 19 man he came as close as you can come and he steps right back out and there goes the curfew bell there goes the curfew bell now Sloan wants to come in and have his hand raised in victory oh Sloan claiming he won the match I think there's quite a bit of doubt in everyone's mind that he did. We'll find out what the official verdict is. Ladies and gentlemen, curfew intervening, decision a draw. And as you heard, the decision in this curfew match between Ronnie Etchison and Smasher Sloan is a draw.
wraps it up for tonight here at the National Arena, but don't forget, next week's great card. I certainly hope you can be with us in person. If not, we'll see you on the tube. Until next week, Ray Morgan saying to you wrestling fans, so long. <laughs> okay, now, really 14 and a half, right? They cut him off. They cut him off. Oh.